in this video, we're going to talk about second derivatives. It means exactly what it sounds like. Second derivative is essentially the derivative of your derivative. First, we're going to talk a little bit about just conceptually what it means, and then we'll do a couple of practice problems. So, first of all, just notation. Uh, the notation for the second derivative of a function, all of these notation over here basically mean the same thing. Different books and professors might use different notation, but essentially it's a double prime. So y double prime, that means the second derivative of y, or, you know, f double prime of x, that's the second derivative. And in the dy dx notation, the second derivative would be this. There's like a d squared y, and then dx squared, that's the second derivative of y with respect to x. And you might also see f with two little subscripts, x, x, where fx, that's just the first derivative of x, but the second subscript, the second x means the second derivative. So, first of all, what does it imply about your function if you know something about your second derivative? If you know your second derivative is positive or increasing or something, what does that mean? Uh, well, we'll talk about that in a sec, but first, let's just back up and refresh ourselves on the relationship between a function and its derivative. If a function is increasing, what do we know about its derivative? Well, if you're increasing, that means you have a positive slope on the derivative of your slope, so that means your derivative is positive. So because of that, that means that the same relationship will hold between the first derivative of, of a function and the second derivative of a function, meaning if the first derivative of f prime is increasing, that means f, the graph of f prime itself just looks something like this. That means its slope, f double prime, will be a positive number. So f double prime is then, in that case, going to be a positive number. Now, in case you're not familiar, here's a couple of new words. Concave up and concave down. Just like positive, negative, or increasing and decreasing could be used to describe a graph, so can the words concave up or concave down. Now, depending on the field, some fields call it concave and convex instead of concave up and concave down. So that can sort of get confusing if you're used to one and not having to shift to the other. So if you're used to concave up and concave down, and you now have to, you're looking at a book and they're talking about something being convex, well, convex means concave up. And concave by itself means what other people might call concave down. So what do these mean? What's the definition of being concave up or concave down? So the definition of concave uh, uh, of concave up or convex is this. It's basically if your derivative increases, if the slope increases, right, as x increases, so as you move to the right on your function, so as x increases, if your slope increases, then the function is concave up. So essentially, they're saying if the derivative is increasing. Well, we already saw that if the derivative itself is increasing, notice that this doesn't, this isn't saying that the derivative is necessarily positive or negative. The, the slope might be a negative slope. Your function might actually, the graph might look something like this, might actually be decreasing, right? So your slope itself is negative, but the slope here is increasing because you're going from a really big negative slope to, you know, not as negative a slope. So the slope here, the derivative might go from like a slope of negative five to here like only a slope of negative one. In this case, as you move to the right, what's happening to the derivative or the slope? The slope is increasing, right? It's going from negative five up to negative one. So really, as long as the slope is increasing, it's what we call concave up. But we know that the slope is increasing is the same thing as saying that the second derivative, meaning the derivative of the slope, is positive. So long story short, what does that imply graphically? If you're concave up, that technical definition of your derivative, your slope has to be increasing, whether it's a positive or a negative slope, means that a concave up function will end up looking some some part or all of this shape, this sort of parabola type shape. So this function, this is an example of a concave up function, because no matter where you're looking, the slope is increasing, whether it's a negative slope here 
or a positive slope here as you move from left to right, the slope itself is going up, which means that the second derivative is positive. Similarly, if your function looked like any part of this, it's concave down because the slope is decreasing. Here it goes from a really big positive slope to like not as positive to zero to then like negative and then more negative. So here the slope, whether it's a positive or a negative slope, the slope is decreasing. So overall, the function is going to be concave down. But if the slope is decreasing, that means that the second derivative will be negative. So the implication here then is this. If f is concave up, what do we know about the second derivative? Simply that it's positive. Because this means concave up implies that the derivative is increasing. And the derivative increasing implies that the second derivative is positive. So we could just say here, we could just jump then directly to if your function's concave up, your second derivative is positive. And similarly, if your function's concave down, then your second derivative is negative. Now, just uh, in a way, this you kind of already know procedurally how to find your second derivative if you know how to find your first derivative. So this shouldn't be uh, new mathematically, but just, just to do a couple of quick problems. Uh, if the question is y equals e to the x squared, find the second derivative. Well, let's see. First, let's just find the first derivative. The first derivative is, let's see, the derivative of e to the anything is just that same thing, e to the x squared, but then times the derivative of the top, right, chain rule. So the derivative of the top is 2x, so we get, that gets multiplied there. So once we have that, now the second derivative is essentially saying treat this guy, treat y prime like the original function, and find that guy's derivative, and that'll give us the second derivative. So the second derivative here, let's see, here though we have to be careful because we gotta do product rule, there's two things. So here the derivative product rule involves the derivative of the first guy, which the derivative of this is just gonna be e to the x squared times two x, we kind of already did that. So all that's the derivative of this when you use the chain rule, but then times the two x as is, which you could even, Go as far as to say 2x squared, because we were just multiplying that by another 2x. Plus, now the other way around, now the e to the x squared as is, and then times the derivative of this, which is just 2. So that's that. Now, uh, the, what about this guy? What's the second derivative here? So, q prime, or if you will, the q dx. Let's see. Here, we gotta use product rule. So the derivative of x is just 1, and the derivative of ln of x is, well, product rule, right? So if we take the derivative of this, we keep this guy as is, plus, now the other way around, now we keep the x as is, multiply by the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x, minus the derivative of x, which is just 1, and this simplifies to just ln of x, well, and then this is x over x is 1, 1 minus 1, that's 0, so this is just ln of x. And so that's what our derivative is. So we want our second derivative. Well, that's as simple as just saying, what's the derivative of ln of x? 1 over x, and so there you go. The second derivative of this guy is just 1 over x. Uh, finally, this example. Here, it's probably wise to rewrite this as 9t to the half. And then the first derivative is just going to be, well, power rule, right? Take the one half down, multiply that out, so that's going to be nine times a half, which is just nine halves, t to the half, subtract one from the exponent, so a half minus one is negative a half. So then for the second derivative, that's just saying the derivative of this guy. So multiply that exponent of negative one half down there, so you're going to get negative nine fourths, because two and times two in the denominator is four, and that's negative, times t to the power of, Negative a half minus another one will give you negative three halves. So there you have it. That's the second derivative there.